13-year congressman, at the time 13-year congressman in the 1st Congressional District in Oregon. Oh, he of the tiger suit, uh, the fellow that referred to the Klingons. I mean, he was an absolute nut. You'll remember uh, he hit on uh, his best friend's daughter who was still in high school. It was an odd bird, but more important than his odd, uh, unhinged personal life, which was fun, was his bad politics and, and, and the things he was doing that was bad for our country. The 1st Congressional District, of course, represents Portland to the coast and a big a big part of uh, Oregon's financial, uh, you know, the financial heft of that state. Well, something interesting is happening there. In the race to replace David Wu, a Republican is gaining ground and the National Democratic Party has swooped in to try to hold on to that seat so that Pelosi can retake the speakership. There's a Republican who, against all odds, is in a runoff in a matter of days against some, against a Democrat insider, and he may just win. We hope he does. His name is Rob Cornelis. Rob, thanks for being with us. Good morning, Michael. Great to be here. Um, this is one of those races that I wish Fox News would get a little more excited about, and I wish some of the national commentators would get a little more excited about. I spent some time yesterday emailing uh, some of the national hosts that I know telling them, look, we got a chance to win this district. I mean, this is a di this is the Congressional District uh, 9 in New York. It's the same thing. First Congressional District in Oregon hasn't gone Republican in, in well over 30 years. So kind of give people that don't know the, the thumbnail sketch of what's going on in this district. Well, we had this special election, as you mentioned, and uh, the last day to vote in an all-vote-by-mail election in Oregon is January 31st. So we have just over a week for everyone to turn in their ballots. They've had their ballots now for well over a week, about a week and a half. And uh, what we're sensing is a terrific surge and momentum for, for our campaign because people look at the two candidates and... And, uh, and they see, you know, the kind of how the establishment has dictated this seat for way too long. Uh, and the same people who who covered up for David Wu all those years are now covering up for my opponent and her poor record uh, being in the state legislature. And uh, so it's kind of deja vu all over again. And uh, people recognize, you know what, we can't have more of the same. And I'm a private business owner coming out of the private sector to run for this seat. Job creator, having employed 60 people. Uh, since I started my company right here in the local area, and people are responding very well to that. They know if jobs is the number one issue, which it is, and my opponent and I agree on that, then maybe we should put someone in this seat who's actually created a job as opposed to someone who's really never, never, ever had to make a payroll or hire someone out of their own back, back pocket, and that describes my opponent. Rob, the first congressional district for which you are running as the Republican, the Democrat, as I understand, is the wife of David Wu's uh, attorney, his personal attorney, who's been defending him against all the wacky things he's done, um, some of which um, they, they border on at least unethical, let's leave it at that. But as I understand it, they've put about $2 million in recently since you've made this surge, and it comes from the Democratic Congressional Committee, Emily's List, Planned Parenthood, the SEIU, uh, all Nancy Pelosi organized funds because she has to hold on to this seat in order to get back the House. That's correct, and uh, it's been quite an onslaught of uh, negative ads against me, trying to deceive the voters, frankly, about my record of, uh, of it as being a job creator and what our company has done. And uh, it's just, it's, it's pretty disgusting, but it's pretty typical and business as usual. When people are desperate, when they have a candidate on the, on the, on the other side that they don't have any confidence in, and that frankly is hiding now and won't debate me any longer, uh, they recognize that the best way to try to hold on to this seat is to discredit me and mischaracterize me. But I'm staying focused on the issues, Michael. I'm, I'm talking about what we have to do to drive job creation, not only in the first district of Oregon, which, as you mentioned, is really the epicenter of economic and economic activity for our state. Rob, can you hold with me for just a moment? You bet. Rob Cornelis is a candidate uh, to be for Congress as a Republican in a district we never would have thought. Exciting things going on. We'll talk to him coming up. Well, I don't want to say it's a once-in-a-lifetime, but it's in the 70s, the last time a Republican represented the 1st Congressional District of Oregon. And it's not just Portlandia, although, in fairness, there are plenty of people in Portlandia who may not be as conservative as I am, but they're certainly not as liberal as David Wu was. And 
they find themselves somewhere in the middle saying, would you stop voting with Pelosi? Because it doesn't matter how you vote. I mean, it doesn't matter what your, your personal politics are. If you're going to support for the speaker, somebody that's going to implement policies that are bad for the district, your individual vote is of no consequence. The most important vote a, a congressman casts, the single most important vote, is for the House speakership. And that's why these Democrats here in Texas, when, when we talk about, you know, Gene Green says, oh, I, I'm a conservative Democrat. You vote for Nancy Pelosi, that's all that matters. After that, the committee chairmanships are, are handed out. The power structure is created. The creation of the speaker is the most important thing you do. After that, the rest is details. And I think a lot of folks in Northwest Oregon are looking at this district, a lot of folks that may be independent, because there's no doubt it's a majority Democrat district, but a lot of folks that are independent are saying, you know what, we're not well represented if we're only going to elect a Democrat. Let's for once elect a Republican and show the Democrats we can't be taken for granted and that they, they wander too far off the reservation. The candidate who has a shot at doing that is Rob Cornelius. Rob, one quick uh, point on, on the, uh, the housekeeper, the administrative. This is a purely vote-by-mail election? Yeah, that's correct. Swanky. Uh yeah, uh, that's uh, the way Oregon voters have uh, have have determined it should be. It's been it's been the case for several years now in our state. Uh, so it's really important that people recognize that we're voting right now, even though election day is the thirty first, Tuesday the thirty first. People are casting ballots as we speak, and so it's really important that we get our message out and that we do all we can. And even your listeners across the country, uh, they can't vote for me, but if they help me get elected, then I can vote for them, just as you're describing when I'm back in. The house so so just to be clear every who all got ballots by mail every registered voter that's correct every registered voter of the first congressional district so north that's right. portland to the coast yes about five counties in the northwest side of oregon and we had a primary back in november so i won the primary with about 73 percent of the vote my opponent won her primary in the democrat side and so now we go after it until the 31st of january and the ballots have to be mailed by the 31st. So actually, by the end of this week, Friday, it's really uh, not advisable to mail it anymore. You have to drop it off at a ballot box so that it, uh, it, it ensures its delivery. Okay. So in a minute or less, you're, you're a small business owner. You're the Republican candidate. Who are you? Who is Rob Cornelius? Well, I'm someone that uh, has, has been uh, a native of the of the area, born and raised here, raised my family here, started my business here, employed 60 people over the years, uh, and finally decided that uh, I'm, I'm tired of being misrepresented, and I'm tired of, of having, in fact, very ineffective representation. I know what it takes to create a job. I know what motivates me to hire free people, and I know what discourages me from hiring people. And here in Oregon, we haven't had representatives who have been business friendly, who have understood those basic principles and that's why we continue to be above the national average in unemployment for 15 straight years and so when when people elect me they're going to finally put someone in this seat representing this vibrant district who understands what we need to do to move the economy forward and i'll have that perspective back in congress but more importantly if you're going to represent northwest oregon or the state of texas do you hunt and fish <laughs> well, I do. I'm not avid. Uh, my son is quite the avid bow hunter, and I've gone with him on a couple of his hunting trips. It's been a great experience. Have you ever been uh, salmon fishing up the Willamette? Uh, you bet I have. That's a trip. Oh, my goodness. The uh, One of the ladies there at the station, her husband uh, played, played ball for uh, Oregon. Big, nice, wonderful guy. And in the summers, he's a Shimano rep. And in the winters, or Shimano and Loomis rep. And in the winters, he's a gun rep. And so he has this decked out uh, boat that's, you know, specifically for the Willamette and took me up the Willamette all the way in. I don't think there's a prettier downtown view in America than coming up the Willamette, looking up at the city. You got the bridge coming over there and you're salmon fishing. Oh, it's Thank you, Michael. It is a beautiful part of the world. That's why I decided when I started my business to stay right here, even though our, our clientele and our customers are largely on the eastern side of the country. Now, tell us, uh, Rob Cornelius is the candidate. It's a, it's a Democrat district that for the first time in over 30 years could go Republican. Rob Cornelius is the Republican. Tell us about the Nancy Pelosi mini-me that you're running against. Well, she's been a state legislator for the last five years, and she has admitted in this campaign that she has never seen a tax increase or fee hike that she voted against. 
and she has she has no record of job creation. She's a lawyer turned politician. As you mentioned, her husband was David Wu's personal attorney for many years while Wu was going through all of those problems and while the establishment was covering up for his misbehavior. And now she wants to be our next congresswoman. She wants to be rewarded for being a part of that. And we're fighting hard to make sure that doesn't happen. That's why the polls show this is neck and neck. It's much closer than the Democrats ever thought it would be. So their only, their only uh, response is to, of course, throw about $2 million of negative advertising out there to try to deceive the voters, just like they deceived us about David Wu. Well, I find it very disturbing that $2 million has come in from outside the district, from uh, Planned Parenthood and from Nancy Pelosi's uh, DCCC, which, of course, their whole goal is to get a Democrat majority again so she can be the speaker. That means the money that's coming in is on the basis of supporting a Pelosi agenda. And I don't think that's what that district wants. And, Michael, wouldn't it be awesome if the first federal election of 2012, which this special election is taking place next Tuesday, if Portland sent a message to the rest of the country, we're tired of more of the same. We're tired of policy that's, that's hurting and, and uh, destabilizing our economy. Which we're ready to put some job creators in Congress who knows what it takes to, to, to meet a budget and to meet a payroll and, uh, and to change the way we look at this economy and how we can write it and uh, and so we're very excited in Oregon to actually develop a positive story here that hopefully the rest of the country will follow we just need well, your it, listeners it'll, it'll make national news I got 10 seconds what's the website Cornelis for congress.com I'll spell it during the break don't worry I'll spell it a few more times in the course of the show Rob Cornelis good luck to you one way or another we hope you win thanks so much Michael all right um, we don't pick and choose congressional races because there are four 450 of them very often but this one would be a whole lot of fun, folks, a whole lot of fun. We'll, po we'll post some information at michaelberry.com as well on that race, and I hope you'll vote.